Sometimes games are just too much, and we all have a memory, whether fond or not, of throwing up our hands and walking away. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 2000s game levels that made us rage quit. Starting off with number 10, it's Call of Duty Modern Warfare's Mile High Club. Let's start off this list hot with a particularly infamous one. Mile High Club is a bonus mission that's unlocked after finishing the main campaign. In it, you're on an airplane and you have to rescue a VIP from kidnappers. It's ridiculous and honestly, not too difficult to complete on normal. But if you want to get the achievement for beating this game on veteran, then this mission changes from being a cool little bonus mission to being one of the most frustrating levels ever. The time limit is ridiculously strict. You've only got one minute to get through the entire place and if you don't want to die in the process, then the only way to do it is knowing exactly what to do before you do it, which is purely a process of trial and error. You gotta know who to shoot, who to avoid, when to duck, when to throw a flashbang, where to go, and if you don't perfectly execute your maneuvers in sequence, then you will either end up dead or you'll run out of time. Call of Duty 4 is pretty tough on veteran in general. Just getting through the the campaign itself is challenging enough, but this final mission can and will stop you dead in your tracks. I, I can't even remember how many tries it took us to finish this back in the day, but it wasn't a couple. It was a lot. So this level really only counts if you're playing on veteran. Normally, it's kind of one that we would count as like a cool little bonus, so that's why we're putting it at the top of the list. It's hard normally, but it's only rage quit hard if you're playing on the highest difficulty, and you're probably only doing that for the achievement. Either that, or you're a masochist. At number 9 is Resident Evil 4's Chapter 3-1. Resident Evil 4 has its share of challenging sections, but for our money, the hardest single level in the entire game occurs here in Chapter 3-1, uh, the first part of the castle. For one thing, the level's long, clocks in at nearly an hour, there are a ton of new enemy types, mini bosses, and all kinds of crap to get in your way, and you also gotta defend Ashley while you're doing it. On its own, this level would be challenging enough, but there's one room, known as the Water Hall, that is the worst. The second you enter the room, you're attacked by a ton of ganados with flails, shields, and crossbows. Just standing at the entrance is suicide. You'll get surrounded in no time if you stay put. And even when you kill a lot of them, the whole, you know, next wave of enemies will spawn. It only takes a hit or two for Ashley to die, too. And even though enemies won't intentionally target her, if you keep her too close and she gets hit, they then go for you. Obviously, if either Leon or Ashley dies, it's game over. But the worst part about this is that there's no checkpoints in this room. If you die at any time, you gotta redo the entire section all over again. So you have to replay the fight where you enter the room, refight the enemies that spawn when you stand on the pressure pads, go through both sections where you send Ashley out to turn some wheels and open the passage forward, and it, it just keeps going. It's probably the longest and most difficult combat section in the entire game. And if you screw up once you start, you gotta do the whole thing again. Anytime we go back and replay this game, this is the pretty much the one section we dread having to go back through. It's such a kick in the balls when you're almost done with this place and some random enemy you didn't notice swings a mace at you and Ashley was standing too close and you get a game over. Most of Resident Evil 4 is just a fun challenge. Like it's not an easy game, but it's not like this. Uh, but this place is obviously terrible. At number 8 is Grand Theft Auto San Andreas' his Wrong Side of the Tracks. Now there was something I said in the first one that made me think of this one. I think you'll be able to pick up on it when we get there. But what really needs to be said to justify why this one is on this list? It's incredibly frustrating for one simple reason. You're totally reliant on your AI buddy. And if you played San Andreas, you definitely remember this one. CJ and Big Smoke go to the train station to crash a meeting between two rival gangs in Los Santos. Uh, the guys get on a train because they don't want you to kill them, I guess. So they run away and you get on a little dirt bike and chase them. You take all of the gang members on the train, mission's over. Sounds simple, right? Well, it's not because you're not the one doing the shooting. Big Smoke, the computer-controlled NPC in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas with incredibly inconsistent AI, is doing the shooting. And uh, here's a big surprise for you. He's terrible at it. For a new 
notorious badass gang member, you'd think he would be better, but the systems of this game do not permit him to be. Like for the targets where he just refuses to shoot properly, this is one of the most frustrating missions you will ever play in a Grand Theft Auto game. You just drive all over the place trying to find the exact spot the game wants you to be in so Smoke can aim at them, but he just doesn't hit anything. So of course the mission also has a tight time limit where the guys can get away. And when they do, Big Smoke actually says, all we had to do was follow the damn train, CJ. Over and over. That line haunts me, I swear. For some people, this mission's easy, and it seems like some of the newer re-releases of the game have made it so that Big Smoke is a better shot. And holy hell, that better be the case with the Definitive Edition. Because people who played this game back when it came out and Smoke just couldn't hit the broadside of a barn, it's, it, this is one of the most annoying missions. It makes me stutter. I, I am so frustrated. And it's just from remembering this level. At number seven is Rainbow Six Vegas 2, The Refinery Mission. It's actually, I think one that doesn't really get talked about a lot, but definitely like one of the most frustrating levels out there. The Rainbow Six Vegas games are all about cooperation and tactics. You're not a bullet sponge, just a few shots can kill you, but with your team, you can deal with basically anything. So of course, near the end of Vegas 2, they force you to go it alone. This whole section is nerve wracking because you're by yourself, enemies are all over the place, and because of the confusing layout of the place, it's really easy for the enemy to get the drop on you. So you have to get used to dying out of nowhere with no idea of killed you because that's really common in this mission. Checkpoints are few and far between as well. So it's great that the section isn't short either. It goes on for a little while and the whole time you're pretty much just sweating bullets, slowly creeping around, switching between night vision and thermal vision in a desperate attempt to spot enemies before they spot you. And if all that wasn't frustrating enough, they throw in a defense mission before the end where you get assaulted from all directions by waves of enemies you have to fight off for yourself. The best thing to do is to find a little corner and hide there. It's kind of the coward's way out, but it's pretty much the only way to survive this part unless you know exactly where enemies are going to spawn. The Rainbow Six Vegas games are pretty challenging normally, but this refinery mission... <laughs> it kind of just defies the mechanics of the game to create something that is unfair. At number six is Demon Souls Island's Edge, uh, which is level 4-1 if you're keeping track. Barely, barely making it onto the list with a 2009 release date. Demon Souls, it's the only game in the brutally difficult Souls series that actually came out in the 2000s. Look, there's so many challenging levels in the game, but the one that made us rage quit the most is definitely 4-1, known as Island's Edge in the remake. A, a big chunk of this level actually isn't too bad. The skeleton enemies are surprisingly aggressive but they give you a lot of room to deal with them same with the vanguard demon lounging around the center of the map with all the space he's not really that hard to deal with but dealing with this guy is where you really start to notice some of the most annoying enemies in any game ever uh the storm beasts they're manta ray looking monsters that fly around in the air and pelt you with spears or crystal shards yeah i, I don't know what they actually are in that remake but that that's what they look like uh, they're hard to keep track of. They have a nasty habit of hitting you while you're trying to do something else. And just to make them a little more annoying, their projectiles kind of track you. They're annoying out in the open, but once you get to this section of the level, uh, that's when things get really annoying because before the boss fight, you had to cross these really narrow ledges along a sheer cliff. And of course, there's skeletons there to slow you down. It's really easy to fall to your death there. And if you're playing a melee build, there's basically nothing you can do but hope and pray you somehow manage to get through here without getting knocked off to your death. Of course, there's no checkpoints nearby. Uh, if you die here, you got to run through the whole level again. The skeleton on these narrow ledges would be bad enough on their own, but combine them with the Storm Beasts, and it's it's one of the most frustrating, nastiest levels in Souls history. And number five is Mega Man X6's Blaze Heatnix. It's kind of a dark horse pick because how many people have actually sat down and played Mega Man X6 for more than a few minutes before giving up in disgust? The game is a slapdash piece of crap. Probably one of the worst games in the entire Mega Man series. Most of the levels could honestly be eligible for this list because they're all terrible. But we have to give special mention to this particular piece of crap. There's two things that make this level uniquely frustrating. It's 
it's repetitive as hell, and a lot of the sections of it are just unfair. Like, see the stupid round ball thing? You have to fight it five times in this one level. It's so boring, you might even fall asleep because every fight against it's the same thing. It floats around, has no animations, and you have to destroy its four cores. Sometimes these things can be frustrating to even hit, like this part where you have to fight it in a room with a sloped surface so this bottom core is blocked for a huge chunk of the battle. But those parts are just annoying. The part where you rage quit is further in. It's one of those obligatory auto-scrolling sections where you have to jump up platforms and not touch the fire. You see stuff like this all the time in platformers, but this one's the worst. For one thing, the flames take up way too much of the screen. Almost 50% of the area is just a dead zone. And because you have so little space to actually work with, it makes getting around some of these platforms almost impossible unless you know exactly what's coming ahead of time. Seriously, it's all unbelievably frustrating, and the fact they make you do this stupid donut fight multiple times makes it worse. Like, this level has the distinction of being both incredibly challenging, not necessarily for good reasons, and incredibly lazy. Like, seriously, they just copy-pasted a JPEG like five times and called it a day. And number four is the Jack 2 Water Slums Ambush. The transition from the happy-go-lucky Jack and Daxter to Jack 2 is night and day. The first game is a fun and easy-going adventure with some challenging parts, but mostly just a fun jaunt. With Jack 2, the story got edgier and so did the gameplay. There are a few parts in this game where they just straight up want you dead, and this mission in particular stands out as the most frustrating. The actual goal is simple enough. You collect a seal piece from this place in the water slums, but then you get attacked by the city guard. The goal here is simple. Escape, which is way easier said than done. If you try to jump in the water, you die, and everywhere you go, you get swarmed by soldiers who also want you dead. Part of what makes this mission so annoying is that you're trapped on these narrow platforms that make it very difficult to dodge the swarms of enemies coming at you. Just trying to stand your ground and fight these guys off is pointless because they just keep coming. I, I mean, like, even trying to thin them out a little is basically a waste because you'll run out of ammo, and trying to aim at all is just going to make it easier for them to shoot you. It's probably one of the most basic mission slash levels on this list. Literally all you have to do is leave the water slum area, but they throw so much in front of you it seems almost impossible. Probably the best way to get through it too is easily the most counterintuitive. You just rush the soldiers as they show up and punch them. You keep spamming punches and because of the narrow walkways, they seem to struggle to respond. I had no idea about this trick years ago, so I spent hours ramming my head into a brick wall trying to get out of there and managed to do it basically through dumb luck. There are a lot of tough missions in Jack 2, but this one definitely was the most rage quit inducing for us. At number three is Halo 3's Cortana, aka the Flood Level. Many consider Halo 3 to be one of the best games in the series. The mission design is really great, normally at least in this one, but there's one level where it's, it's universally reviled. It's this level, which sees you enter the flood-infested former capital of the Covenant High Charity, and it's, it's a total slog that throws wave after wave of flood monsters at you almost nonstop. The narrow corridors make it hard to do anything anything but just brute force your way forward and the way enemies blend in with the walls uh it, it really, it's really annoying to make matters worse these pods are everywhere and if you shoot them they spawn more flood at which can and will go and regenerate any dead enemies around so you're just constantly you're refighting things you've already killed you add in these turrets and awkward spots and it's just an all-around painful level that seems to go on forever the best halo levels give you a lot of room to play your way but this one's just a frustrating corridor filled mess with like the most annoying enemies in the entire series. And number two is 2005's God of War, Hades. Uh, Hades is a challenging late game level that takes place in the actual hell. There's not a lot of combat, but Kratos kind of has to tiptoe carefully across all these long rotating beams and blades. Getting hit by said blades will send Kratos straight into a bottomless pit, might I add. The extras disc for God of War 2 reveals that the Hades level was the only one that wasn't play tested, hence the difficulty. And the combat sections of this level aren't really that bad. It really is just the platforming. That whole part is just unbelievably frustrating and pointless. It's like, who really asked for a brutally challenging platform section in the God of War game? Why does simply touching these blades send you careening to your death or back to the beginning when Kratos takes way worse punishment for the rest of the game and walks away completely fine? Everything about it's annoying, it's frustrating, and, and basically no other section in the entire series makes us rage quit in the way this does. 
And at number one is Psychonauts Meat Circus. The original Psychonauts is kind of a easy going game until you get to the final level that is. Uh, it's set in this bizarre combination of a butcher and a circus. Uh, it's grotesque and it is as difficult as it is grotesque. Like the previous example, the difficulty comes down purely to platforming. I mean, Psychonauts is a platformer, so you at least expect it, but some of the jumps that are required feel like they have to be completely perfect to pull off. And of course, as usual for this list, the checkpoints come few and far between. Certain jumps near the end are just total leaps of faith, and because of a certain bug that would make it so the game wouldn't register a jump properly, this is one level that would literally sometimes be actually impossible if you're unlucky enough to get that bug but even without that this level is incredibly tough compared to the rest of the game and combining the brutal difficulty with the nasty visuals only makes the rage come easier but that's all for today leave us a comment let us know what you think if you like this video click like if you're not subscribed now's a great time to do so we upload brand new videos every day of the week best way to see them first is of course a subscription so click subscribe don't forget to enable all notifications and as always thank you very much for watching this video i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter at falcon hero we'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.